Hello everyone, over the past few years I've been uploading Telegram messaging bot tutorials using c and .NET, but the library keeps updating and uh, my videos are now outdated. So in this tutorial we'll cover with the update using the updated library, how to receive messages from a bot, how to save the messages and usernames into a list, convert the list to JSON, save that JSON file to the disk and read from that JSON file. So to start, we will first go to manage NuGet packages in order to add the telegram.bot uh, packages. So we add the telegram.bot library, which is uh, version 17.0.0 as of the date of uploading this video. Also uh, the version of the extensions.polling library 1.0.2. So after adding these two libraries, we start by creating a static variable, which is our client, Telegram bot client. We'll keep this instance. Of course, it requires a token, but we have not created our bot yet. So we go to Telegram to the bot father. You can find it just by typing bot father in the search create a new bot, pick a name, pick a username, and it will give you a token. So copy that token and paste it here. And voila, now we have a reference to our bot. Now in order to start receiving the updates, we have to use an extension method from the polling library, which is bot.startreceiving. And in Visual Studio, we can press F12. So it takes us to the various methods, description about the parameters, return type, what the function does, etc. For example, in this function, it takes an update handler, an error handler, and uh, receiver options. We'll cover that now. So we go to our program. We add the, f the method which is update handler, it's not defined yet. The error handler also. And the receiver options, usually, uh, because receiver options is not a method, so I prefer writing it in camel case. Control dot, enter, control dot, enter, and Visual Studio creates the methods for us. Error handler and update handler. Now about the receiver options. We can give press F12 and check the type of receiver options, which is receiver options. It contains multiple properties, offset, allowed updates, and limit, to limit the number of updates. Of course, the update type can be a message. For example, can be an edited message, an update about an edited message. If the bot was part of a channel, it may be a channel post. So now to create our receiver options, we have to create a variable, which is an instance of receiver options. Control dot to add the namespace. Then we can press control space on the keyboard to check the various properties. We need the allowed updates. So which is uh, an instance of update type and it's of course an array, not a variable. So we have a list of allowed updates. Now we can get rid of this and add the namespace instead. So we start, can start by adding update types, of course, control space, and check the various types. Let me pick message. And I also picked edit message. So we receive updates whenever a user sends a message or edits a message. Now we're good to go. I don't think we'll be using error handler. Uh, I prefer to change the name of the variables from arg1 to bot and update. So uh, the method gives an error because the return type is uh, uh, wrong. It should be async task, but while writing the code, 
I made a mistake and uh, write it void. I'll fix it later on. Now I can get uh, the message by uh, writing update.message or edited message. So first let me check uh, the update type. So if update type equals equals message. So if a user sends a message, I can check also the type of that message. Equals equals message type. We have various message types, such as uh, an audio, for example, a photo, for example. But for simplicity, now I will pick text. So if I received a message and it was a text, so I'll get that text, which is update.message.text. Very straightforward. Now, for example, if I want to get the identifier, for example, so I write uh, message.chat.id, which is the identifier of the chat. I can also get the username, which is .chat.username, which is the username of the user sending uh, the message, the text message. Uh, you can always press F12, it will take you to the definition. And we have all these properties for the chat, which we can use. As you can notice, the username is nullable, because the username in Telegram is not mandatory. So it's a good practice if we make it a nullable string, so it doesn't throw an error. And now let's print it. So I'm printing username, ID, and text. It gave me an error because I have to change the return type of the method from uh, void to async task. So after changing it, the program runs without any errors. Now if I go to my bot, I put the username in the search bar. I press start. So now it returns username, ID of the chat, and start. And if I type any text, it will give me the same. I don't have multiple usernames to test, so, but, it, uh, but this is the theory and it will work. So now uh, let's write and read uh, these uh, updates into file. So first let's name the file. We define a static string, which is a file name. Let's name it updates.json because we'll be writing it in JSON format. So uh, let's create the structure of our update. Struct bot update, which should contain a string which is the text, a long which is an ID, and of course a username which is a string, a nullable string. So now when we run our program we have to read uh, the list of uh, the saved uh, updates in the file. So we create a list of bot updates. We name it bot updates. And let me initialize it here to an empty list. Now at the beginning of the main function, we have to read all the saved updates from the file. And later on when we receive updates, we have to write that update to a file. So the read at the beginning of the main function and the write at the end of the update function. So now let's start. We'll uh, do it in a try catch block to check if the file exists, uh, if we can read from the file, if we can serialize the JSON so that the program doesn't crash. So now we uh, have to read from the file. We use system.io.file.read all text, 
which will open the file, read the text, and close the file. We'll give it the path, which is our file name. And then we'll be reading it as a string. So we have deserialize it, we have to deserialize it and put it in our list, which we defined at top, which is bot updates. So we use a JSON convert method, control dot to add namespace. Then deserialize object, we give it the type of the object, which is a list of bot updates. And we give it the string, which we've read from the file. Uh, at the beginning, uh, the content of the file will be empty, so it will be null. I don't want it to be null, so I can use this operator and put an empty list in case it, if the file was empty, instead of having it uh, as null. So now our try block uh, is finished. We of course have to enclose it with a catch block, which takes an exception and then I want to print uh, to the console when the when an exception happens so you can use uh, this operator to write error reading or just realizing uh, and have this exception so now uh, we have the code to read and deserialize the object from a file which is a list of bot updates now we have to write an update an actual update so instead of having uh, defining variables here we have just to define one variable which is a bot update it will be uh, by the definition of our structure that we defined on the top of the file so I'll just uh, use the same code do some changes so the text property the ID property and the username property now we have our bot update so we have two more steps we have to add this bot updates bot update to our list of updates I was struggling to remember my name while writing that code. So bot updates dot add bot update and then I have to write it to a file. So uh, I'll be using bot update string. So I have first I have a list so I have to uh, convert it into a string. So I'll serialize it. I'll give it the list of bot updates and then I'll use the same one I used uh, above which is system.io.file write all text and I'll give it the file name and then I'll give it the serialized string which is all the bot updates so it will overwrite the content of the file and write the list so now we're good to go I can now go ahead and run the code. Of course it gave an exception because it can't read the file because the file does not exist. Because we did not create it yet, but it's not a problem. We can just write any text and it did not give any exception. We can go to our program and see that it created an updates.json file which contain an array of json content containing the text, the id and the username of course I can write any other text and I think I have to upload the same video next year so it's working 
it's adding uh, all the messages into uh, the file so now let's check if it's actually reading the content of the file so it did not give an exception so it deserialized it and now if I type any text it will preserve the content before and it will write the new text I can use an extension for VS Code called Beautified.json to read the JSON and now whatever I add the code will be working so you can use this to uh, save and read uh, uh, anything from a file while interacting to your bot in C-sharp. Thank you for watching, I hope it was beneficial for you and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content. Thank you for watching.